Welcome to the regional botanical gardens on the Gold Coast. It's picturesque Australia where you can escape from the traffic and the noise of the glitter strip and immerse yourself into the sensory delights of plants and flowers. Today we're going to take you for a walk around so you can see what's on offer here, including the sensory garden, the mangroves to mountains walk, the butterfly gardens and the rose gardens. We might even get a chance to have a coffee at the Friends Centre. So come on, let's go. So I'm here with the founding member of the Friends of Gold Coast Regional Botanical Gardens, Kate Heffernan. And I'm really happy to have a few minutes of your time, Kate, because what people don't realise is there's actually a really interesting story behind the Gold Coast Regional Botanical Gardens. So can you tell us a little bit about the history and how this all came about? Well, it all came about because of a group of very like-minded people yep. who got together and lobbied. They were advocates for botanic gardens for the Gold Coast and after a couple of years they were they won their story and this site was selected and the botanic gardens started great so there was nothing here before then or oh, there was yes the, where we're actually standing at the moment is part of the old rosser property and the okay. rosses were a pioneering family here and they donated um, their portion of land which forms about 10 percent of the botanic gardens okay. as an environmental park so that meant we had a site that we could start with and a floodplain that couldn't be built on that could become a botanic gardens. Wow. And and so it was you and you what put a notice in the paper asking if there were other people interested in I did, yes, a letter to the editor. And yep. and also I knew a number of people because I'm a professional horticulturist and, and they joined in, people from the um, local professional body. And uh, the rest is history really, but everything that you see down there has had a hand of the friends in it somewhere. And what's the importance of botanical gardens, do you think, for people? Well, there's this wonderful social advantage of yeah. a place for people to go and relax and enjoy. Yeah. But just as importantly is the science and the education. Yeah. We have some of the um, most amazing flora in Australia, in our region. Oh, yeah. Over 1,700 different species actually grow in our region. Oh, wow. And so our role is to actually make them known to people and make people understand how vulnerable they are in the wild right. um, and educate children of the great thing because children learn very quickly and they will take the message on through their whole lives. Of course, yeah. Yep. So you've got um, natives here in, in the region. Um, are you helping to protect these natives and yes. help them not go extinct? That's exactly right. We have quite about 60 or 70 um, of the city's most uh, endangered plants in the collection oh, and from those we can propagate and put them out into the um, in, into the wild again, bring them back from the brink, as they say. Oh, great! Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And um, a few dates. So, when did this all? Like, how long has this been around for now? So, when did it start? The first planting day was in July two thousand and three. Okay, and yep. that was a community planting day. And uh, ever since then, there's been three or four planting days a year. We had one last weekend, actually. Oh, great! Um, and there's still work to do, though. We haven't finished. There's still work to do.
Alan Donaldson and he's one of the volunteers here and he's going to have a chat to us about what he does here. What's your role here and what do you get up to? <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, well, uh, the Friends Nursery is uh, one of the vital uh, groups within the nursery uh, uh, and uh, we've been going probably about 10 years now, okay. uh, all volunteers. Uh, we meet each week every Friday and uh, uh, we propagate plants, uh, um, mostly native plants. We do grow a few exotics but, uh, um, and uh, they're all for sale. We have a, a sale every uh, first Friday of every month yep. and we also sell plants at the Friends Centre. And, uh, so uh, uh, we make uh, reasonable money which goes back into the uh, Friends group and that eventually goes back into the garden. So, uh, but, uh, we have a lot of fun propagating plants. That's fantastic. And what plant have you got here uh, for us? This is an acacia bruneoides. It's typical of the plants that we grow. It's a regional native acacia, or wattle. Uh, it's uh, quite an attractive little plant. It's, it's not well known in horticulture, and that's one of our roles, is to uh, grow things that aren't well known in, in, in popular horticulture at the big nurseries. So this is a, a plant that flowers late spring. Uh, it's a massive uh, little powder puff uh, cream uh, flowers and uh, uh, they, uh, they're not long lived but they, they're very spectacular while they are alive. Probably five years you grow, grow them and you just get a new one. So oh. part of the regional uh, uh, ecosystem for the Gold Coast. That's beautiful and so you can sell these to people and then they put natives into their gardens and so you're helping to, to keep these natives flourishing and Absolutely, alive. yeah, because a lot of the habitat and, uh, and uh, uh, vegetation on the coast has been lost due to development yes. and uh, these plants are uh, some of the ones that have suffered most uh, in, in this e e ecosystem around here. And, uh, so um, that's one of our primary aims is to reintroduce them into horticulture. So I'm lucky enough today to catch the coordinator of the Information Centre, um, Mary Woods. And um, I wanted to ask you, Mary, what's the significance of the Information Centre here, where visitors can come? Well, as you say, it's an Information Centre. Yep. We call the building the Friends Centre because the Friends of the Gardens are the volunteers that provide the visitor services yes. to, for our, all of our visitors. So people pop in here 
to get a map or yep. a brochure, find their way around the gardens. Yep. Uh, they often bring in pieces of plant material for identification. Oh, interesting. Um, the, the, the Gold Coast Regional Botanic Gardens, of course, features our local Indigenous native species. Yes. People want to plant those. So, um, although the Friends Nursery is active on one Friday every month, we actually sell a range of native plants from a trolley here on the veranda, which are very popular. Yep. And uh, every couple of weeks, the Friends group called Flowers by Friends bring in the floral arrangements, yep. which are very popular. They're all native plants. Oh, beautiful. They're not taken from the gardens. Okay. We buy them commercially, okay. but they represent the sort of things that are available in the gardens. We also, we, in our small space, yep. we can accommodate uh, just a small sample of different things. Yep. But, so we focus our books on um, Local plants, local walks, uh, lo local wildlife. Okay, yep, sure. Okay, um, yep. Around the Gold Coast area. Yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to give a plug for this one. Bird oh, Wings New Home. Yeah. It was written by one of our friends. Oh, lovely. Lynette Riley. Yep. It's the, you, if you know anything about the bird wing, Richmond bird wing butterfly, I've heard of it. Um, it's an, a spectacular. This is both the male and female on the cover here. Yep. They have a wingspan about this big. <laughs> but they are threatened in the wild because they only lay their eggs on one particular plant, which is a vine, and it looks like a weed. Oh, so, so everyone pulls it out. out. Yes. Oh no. So this is a story based on the theme of homelessness. Okay. So these butterflies are homeless without a right. Oh, how beautiful! Oh, thank so. you for showing us that. So this is a book everybody can um, would really um, find interesting. I think. Yes, <laughs> that's a children's story. So yeah. Oh, thank that's you. Very good. Okay, so we're here with Gareth actually um, out in the gardens here and Gareth takes the um, guided walks, um, the native bee guided walks here in the gardens. So, um, so what does that entail Gareth and what's the difference between a honey bee and a native bee? Well the honey bees are from Europe. Okay. The native bees are from Australia. Oh well there you go, that's, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> okay. there's, although there's a lot of honey bees in Australia, they were brought here probably sometime around 1820, 1830. Okay. And they've been here ever since. And they're everywhere. Yep. They're, and they're feral in Australia also. <coughs> but uh, they're quite large compared to the native, the, the native bees that live here. Yep. Are very small compared to the honey bees. Yep. And do they get along or do the, um, do the European bees, do they pose a risk to the native bees? Um, here in the gardens they get along basically because there's enough food for everybody. Uh -huh. If okay. there was a, a shortage of food or a minimal amount of food, there might be problems. Okay. And the native bees are pretty small compared to the honey bees. Yeah. But in the, in the botanic gardens we've never experienced any anxiety or any angst between the two species. Okay. And how important are native bees to our native flora and fauna? Well, very important because a lot of our there's a, there's a sim symbiotic relationship between the bees and the plants because they've been together for several million years yep. and the bees fit the plants and the plants fit the bees. Sure. Um, plants fit the bees because the plants decide how they make their pollen, how they make their nectar yep. and if they can make the flavor that the bees like, it's good for the plants. Sure. Yep. What can we do um, as people in the community to look after our native bee population? Stop destroying habitat. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of examples around the Gold Coast in particular where good habitat has been destroyed yeah. to build a couple thousand houses here, a couple thousand houses there. Yeah. And then when the habitat's gone, the bees go with it. Yeah, yeah of course. But yeah. th that doesn't mean there's not a lot of useful habitat in trees that people have put around houses and things. There is. Okay. There's, there's almost every neighborhood in the Gold Coast has enough plants to support bees in the, in, in the, out in the neighborhood. Oh right. These, these native bees will fly 500 meters to find food. Okay, oh so wow, that's a that's, long that's, way for a very That's pretty small. good distance from almost any house. There's no house here in the Gold Coast that's that far away from uh, food they can use. Oh wow. But don't forget they eat 12 months a year, so okay. they eat food summer and winter. Okay, sure, yep. And I suppose the, um, the importance of having the botanical gardens here 
is so that native bees can have a, a safe home here, um, along with native birds and um, native greenery as well. Yeah, and, and it works the other way around too. The bees are good for the gardens, yes. as well as the gardens being good for the bees. Yeah, sure. Well, what a great day it's been here at the Botanic Gardens and what a gift this beautiful green haven is to the city of Gold Coast. And it's so fantastic, the people in the Friends Group, um, all their hard work in maintaining this area and it's, it's a real asset to the city here um, to have this beautiful place to just come and unwind and appreciate nature. And um, I highly recommend if you're in the Gold Coast area or especially if you're a local, come down here um, have a look around, have a walk around and just enjoy what nature has to offer.